Please pray with me. The land is not able to bear all his words. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Four years ago, when uh, my wife and I bought our home in Dallas, the backyard was nearly entirely covered in concrete. We had one of those uh, driveways with a a pole away, and there was also a, a weird slab of concrete in the back corner of it. And, you know, when you have little kids, you have dreams for a lawn and a place for them to play, and concrete is not in your dreams. And so I did what uh, people my age do. I called a friend and rented a jackhammer, and we went to town for a full day and thought I could take this whole thing out. We got about an eighth of the way through it uh, after a day's worth of work, and I realized we needed to call a larger machinery and uh, get the concrete removed. When the concrete was removed, the soil beneath is hard. In fact, quite hard. As I've shared with you before, in fact, multiple times, I am terrible at growing grass. And I think perhaps the reason why I am so terrible at growing grass is because for a long time, that soil was sitting hardened underneath concrete. In order to make soil ripe and ready to receive the seed of grass or anything else, you need to dig real deep, deep into the ground to get that soil prepared for life. You need to break it in order for the soil to be able to be a blessing with grass. The herdsman from Judah, Amos, he came to the northern kingdom, Israel, with an unwanted word. The northern priests who served Jeroboam, that rebellious king, said, flee away to the land of Judah. Go back home, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. The land is not able to bear all of your words. Perhaps you've received an unwanted word. The Old Testament and gospel texts for us are true events that function as a parable, they function as a picture, as the parable of the sower, of human hearts that are hardened soil, soil covered with the veneer of concrete, baked tight and unhospitable to the seed of God's word. Unwanted words. Perhaps you've been the recipient of an unwanted word Perhaps you've been the bearer of an unwanted word. Often in these situations, people shield themselves. They put walls up like concrete over the earth. They've become impenetrable from weakness or correction. Having a two-year-old, I know something about the nature of an unwanted word. But little children often put their guard down quite quickly. It's grown-ups like you and me whose hearts are conditioned and hardened, who have mastered the art of insulating themselves from corruption, perhaps from years of being hurt or years of puffing themselves up with a false self. Oftentimes, it's just a mixture of both. Friends, God... He speaks to us, and his words are always loving, always loving. But his loving words must first break us before they can bless us, such that, like Jacob, we walk forever with a limp. We must receive his crucified, corrective no before we can receive his resurrection yes. So let's first look at the way in which the word of the Lord breaks us. The word of the Lord corrects and breaks us. 
That's in fact what is central to what is happening in our Old Testament and gospel passages. Look at them. Amos says, the high priests, the high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. I mean, that's pretty harsh language. He's saying that ultimately there is going to be a great judgment. This is the whole plumb line language. He's a judge, and he will judge correctly, and I will rise against this king. These are not the words you read and have that experience of your heart becoming strangely warmed. (laughs) God is mad in this text, and he's speaking through Amos. And what is God mad about? The context of Amos, it becomes clear. If you read just a couple chapters prior, here is what Amos says. He says, hear this word, you cows of Bashan on Mount Samaria, that is the northern kingdom, who oppress the poor and crush the needy. And then later, for I know how many are your offenses and how great your sins. There are those who oppress the innocent and take bribes and deprive the poor justice in the courts. You see, the Lord throughout Scripture reveals himself to be the defender of the weak. He is a God who aligns himself with the poor, with the sojourner, with the orphan and widow. There are few things that incite the anger of God more than when a strong person exploits a weak person, when a strong person hurts a weaker person. John the Baptist had a similar message. If you recall him being beheaded, what did he do? He said, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. And then people would ask, what is it that we should do? And his response in Luke's account of that message is interesting. He hones in on the same features of Amos. He says to the tax collectors, the strong, the corrupt, he says, don't take more than you should. He says to the soldiers, don't extort money, don't tell lies, don't accuse people falsely. He goes into these features of the plumb line, of the righteous and just ways of behaving, specifically the powerful, the strong, treating the weak as they deserve. You see, The word of correction, that is, the word of the law, it breaks the hearts of those who are humble. When the humble hear these words from God, it is received not defensively, but with a broken and contrite heart. This the Lord does not despise or reject. There's a song I love by a band named The Bleachers. It's called, I Want to Get Better. (laughs) Some of you may know this uh, band or this song, but it has a chorus that you just want to sing along with. And in fact, saw them recently in a concert, and the whole crowd is just singing it together. And it's a great line. It says, I didn't know I was broken until I wanted to change. I want to get better. I want to get better. Better, better, better. I want to get better. See, when God speaks his corrective no, it exposes the humble of heart in such a way that they want to get better. They see his no even as a form of love. They receive it like Nineveh received Jonah's message, not as Jeroboam, Amos's like that of Saul on the road to Damascus, like that of Peter in John 6, ever after hearing a hard teaching, says to Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? Only you have the words of life. One of the things that is worth paying attention to here is the way God chooses to speak. It's often in the surprising ways and people. Amos is a humble herdsman from a different country. John the Baptist was culturally weird, even back then. 
He lived in the wilderness. Kids, he even ate bugs. I mean, that's weird in all times and places, okay? Jesus, the ultimate speech of God, too, is weird, surprising, not what you expect. And his ultimate speech, let me remind you, God's ultimate speech is through Jesus crucified on the cross, which is foolishness to the Greeks and a stumbling block for Jews. God speaks to us in surprising ways. Is the soil of your heart soft and tender to his word? Will you receive him with a broken and contrite heart? If you do, even this corrective word of no will be yes for you. It will be the kind of thing that breaks you in order to bless you. Because his word is always blessing to the humble. The word blesses us. Look at the text from Ephesians. It begins with being a blessed people. Look at it. Blessed be God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Moving into the passage, what is that blessing? Well, chiefly, it is that in him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness, is, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. You see, the word that reveals our brokenness, the plumb line, the prophetic correction and no, is also the same word that speaks Christ has paid the debt of our rejection of him. In fact, he is rejected so that we might be accepted. He has absorbed God's no to the world on the cross so that we might receive God's yes to Christ in him. Who are the ones that are blessed? Look again at the text. Look at the very bottom. Who are the ones that are blessed? You had heard the word of truth and believed it. That word that breaks you and blesses you, that word from the Lord that you received and believed, if that is true of you, You are the ones who are blessed. You see, you cannot experience the blessed life until you've been broken and contrite. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. My question to you this morning is, what does God want to say to you? What is perhaps his message that he has been trying to convey to you, but that perhaps you have been insulated and guarded yourself from, like concrete veneers over hardened soil. Oftentimes, God speaks to us through Christians closest to us, the people who know us and know the patterns of our life. Are you willing to listen to them? Breaking the concrete and removing it is one thing, but digging deep into the soil and breaking it up so that it is soft and tender is quite another. This kind of soil renovation is excruciating and difficult when you do it yourself or metaphorically when it is done to you in the real concrete nature of your heart. Sometimes it comes by way of being exposed and found guilty. Sometimes it comes by way of pain and wounding. Sometimes it comes by way of an all-out intervention. Perhaps you've dealt with anyone who's been a recovering addict. They will say to you, it required an intervention in order to be blessed with sobriety. However, the word finds its place in the unmasked and deep 
recesses of your heart, when it gets there, it blesses us with generation of life. It is like the parable of the good soil. It yields 100, 60, or 30 times what is sown. Listen again to the words from the psalm from this morning, to those who listen to what God is saying. It finishes this way. Truth shall spring up from the earth, garden imagery, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Blessed are those.